Hello, hello. We're drawing. I'm just going to start. Oh, hello, hello. How's it going? Hunter. Hello, also. fall asleep hey that's cool as long as you're having a nice chill time you know This way. 
maybe. Yeah, probably. What? Oh. already I can tell like that Maximus hello Day's been alright. Hope your day's also been good. Okay, so mm -hmm. I think this needs to be more more hunched over. Super action-y, but I guess action scene. Got some boys on a hike tonight. Put the 
this a little further back. Now, I don't know if I want to make this another tank Jesse drawing, or if I want to do like a Jesse and Roz drawing. Maybe the these buds are on a hike or something, you know. I feel like I never really do uh, Jesse Ross, so let's do that. It's a favorite lookout post. Maybe. Um, okay, so Roz is more round. figure out I guess I'll start with these friends uh, I want to use whoops one of these like hand drawn kind of brushes something about this one feels too digital, you know? I think it's the, like, blotchy, like, uh... This. This little pixely. This. That I don't like. It feels too much like, uh... feels too much like the little spray can thingy in mess paint. I don't know how I feel about this one either. It's like okay, but it's like not okay. I like this one, if not for the pixelation. So maybe I can mess with some like anti-aliasing on it or something. Let's try it and see. doing that is the thing. Put under the shape maybe? Classic filtering. Improv. Filtering. No filtering. Um, 
better. again I always forget Just does. Hmm. I think as much as just like if I cross over the line. Sort of what I was looking for. Movement needs to be down. should make this worse. But I'm not really seeing it. Is the problem. Uh, so rotation. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Don't jitter. Keep that all the way up. Probably. What does that do? I don't know what that does. Want random. that okay so if I turn the scatter back up does that no not really uh, let's keep it at about a quarter and we'll see how this goes
It didn't really do much, honestly. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, I think... Oh, here we go. Is this anything? Facing should be like way down. Oh yeah, fall off is not a thing I want. How about that? Is that any better? Not really. this anything. Kind of, but not really. Probably looks better with it on. I don't think this actually works for this brush. Sometimes that doesn't really do anything. <laughs> oh, so we don't want size jitter like at all. We don't want opacity jitter really. here is like what I want is like this but not quite as fuzzy on the edges you know what I mean been subscribing. I appreciate it immensely. Thank you. You're too kind. Um, okay, so does that do what I want? Oh, actually kind of. Yes. This is pretty much what I want. It might get a little weird with some of the, if I'm pressing too light. 
Uh, so maybe I can do something to fix that. Uh, I think that would be under pressure. Don't want anything changing based on how I tilt this. Bleed and all that's probably fine though. Okay. Uh, flow. Yes. Okay. Uh, and also, minimum size, we want it to go very small. I don't know if I said hello to you as well, but hello, also, because I didn't. I said it in my brain, but I don't know if I said it out loud. Uh, guide you through your brush settings. I would try, but I honestly don't know what I'm doing. So, we'll see. <laughs> um, as far as I understand it, all of the, uh, I don't know, I feel like all the categories are kind of self-explanatory a little bit, like this affects how you, the path of the brush, so like the spacing is, uh, actually maybe it'll be better if I explain it with shape first. So every brush in every drawing program is essentially a collection of stamps. Uh, this is the shape of the stamp of this brush. This is this like brick looking shape here. You get a line because it puts the stamps very close together. Uh, so like if I, I want to do that, is that like 70 something? Who cares? Um, so if I turn the jitter or the spacing way up, you can kind of see what happens there where it sort of separates how far the distance is between the stamps. Turn that way down, you get like a line because they're all basically on top of each other. Um, so all this stuff kind of determines the placement of the stamps uh, in relation to how you're putting the pen on the page. So the jitter is like how randomly spaced apart they are. The spacing is the actual distance between the stamps. And the fall off is how soon at the end of it, it like stops. So I have to like draw for a little while where it only takes like the beginning of the stroke, if that makes sense. Um, stabilization, I usually don't turn this on a lot of the time, but uh, this can help to sort of give you cleaner lines if getting like super clean lines is not a thing that you're super great at doing uh, a lot of the time it's best for like calligraphy stuff um, so like if you need like a really fancy uh, like a fancy L or whatever uh, that's not how L's go if you need like a fancy L if you turn on like your stabilization a lot more, it'll make it so it's a lot easier for you to draw the L. But it does this like weird pinning thing, which is why I don't use it. Um, where it kind of like uh, to kind of explain it, see how it's like exactly following where I'm drawing. But if I turn on the stabilization a ton, it like kind of sticks awkwardly in places. 
and kind of tries to interpolate from the past or whatever. Uh, all that to say, oh wait, I kind of didn't go through all of them. I just sort of stopped. <laughs> um, taper affects like, well, the taper and the things that cause the brush to taper. Um, so like it can taper with uh, size and opacity. So the start and the end will be thinner than the middle and less uh, opaque than the middle. Um, you can also set it to be like based on the pressure you're applying with the pencil or uh, the angle at which you're holding the pencil, all that stuff. Um, touch is like the same kind of thing, but like if you're touching with your finger, I think. Uh, shape is like the stamp itself and messing around with how that appears. Uh, you can set the scatter for how far space it applies it, how like it spins it. Usually you want, like if you want like round lines, you want the rotation to be kind of decently high because it, it'll like spin it around if that makes sense. So like as it puts stamps down, they kind of spin in their orientation, like round and round in circles, if that makes sense. It helps to kind of smooth out the line, I guess. Uh, the count determines like how many of these it puts in one spot. The count jitter can make that a random amount. Uh, I don't know what most of these do. Uh, I'm pretty sure these just flip what this shape looks like on like the axis that is listed, either the X or the Y. All this stuff gets into like if you're very specifically trying to do some some stuff, which usually I'm not. Um, this is just me messing with normal brushes for the most part. Uh, the grain is like, there's a texture that's applied to the brush. Um, so like all of the parts over here in this little preview that are white, this grain will be applied to those as well. Um, moving grain is like, it moves with the pen as you place it down. Texturized is like, uh, you ever see um, Chowder, the show Chowder, how some of the textures kind of stay in one place as the characters move around behind? It's like that. So no matter where I like draw, it's gonna try and put this pattern underneath it. Um, if that makes sense. We don't want that. Um, yeah, I don't know what some of these things do, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, rendering is more for like painterly stuff, I think. Uh, if you want your brush to sort of mimic more like a paintbrush style. Wet mix is kind of the same thing. Certain brushes have the ability to do this and some don't. I don't know what defines what does and what doesn't. Um, but this also sort of applies to like if you're doing more painterly stuff with trying to mimic how much paint you have on a paintbrush type of stuff or how the paint interacts with itself uh, on the page or whatever, all that stuff. Uh, color dynamics, you can have your pen change colors as you draw, which is kind of cool. Um, I've seen folks who make brushes for like if you're in a library trying to color in a bunch of books all at once it'll make it a random color every time you put down the pen so um you can just kind of make all the books in one little go rather than constantly going back and forth to pick colors and stuff um dynamics is like based on how you're making the stroke i'm gonna like change the song it's <laughs> throwing me off uh, dynamics is like, uh, it affects how the stroke looks based on how you made the stroke in the first place. So like if you go really fast, it'll look different versus if you go really slow, that sort of stuff. Um, pencil is specifically for if you're doing stuff with the pencil. Uh, this one's like a 
literal pencil brush. So if I hold it sideways like this, it'll be like if I was holding an actual pencil sideways uh, versus if I'm going straight up and down, it'll be like if I'm holding a pencil straight up and down. That's one of the reasons that I like using the pencil sometimes uh, when sketching. Uh, properties are just general brush properties, I think. I don't really know, to be honest. The materials is something for like, if you're drawing on 3D shapes, which is a thing that's kind of new for Procreate. Uh, you can like do AR stuff, I don't know. And then about is like random statistics, like who made it and when and all that stuff. I don't really care about that. We're gonna mess around with this for now though. Um, I think I want it pretty thin to start. Maybe not that. say like here for now. I hope that was helpful, but I really don't know <laughs> if it was or not. Actually, I don't I want this here. I want this a little bit higher. I think like here. brush no this is the standard uh, 6b pencil brush that I just kind of adjusted a little bit This eyebrow's too big. Oh no. Landlord decided to come and say hi. Uh, let me start somewhere that's not the face. Maybe that'll help me get a better bearing on this brush.
trying to get like a comic inking kind of vibe out of this. That's the like new thing I'm trying today. feel you. It's more like that.
Mediterranean feel. Sound like you're describing a dish at your favorite restaurant. Which is not usually how people speak about their landlord. A dish you'd like to dig into. Oh boy. Just like this band the chat. Same, to be honest. Only I do it with a voice that puts people to sleep. But yeah, I was gonna like read a bedtime story again. I don't know what to read though. So maybe I'll have to do it next stream. I will definitely forget though, so someone may have to remind me. Read a bedtime story? What? Um, it wasn't recently actually, it was like a long time ago, probably. Like now that I'm thinking about it. I think it was Goodnight Moon or something.
maybe not this. My current problem with this guy is I don't really know what I want his expression to be here. One thing I'm noticing about this brush is uh, I'm still getting a lot of like voids in places where the line isn't fully complete. So I know for like color later that could pose a problem, but I'm going to try a slightly different coloring method than normal today. Charles' eyes always give me trouble. Maybe I'll do this a little later, actually. So what I really want is uh, just like the top line. Really? So I'll come back to his eyes some other time. giving him a hand up on top of these rocks that they're standing on but I don't want it to be in like a like a pitying condescending way because Jesse does also hike sometimes it's not like he can't keep up or whatever Roz is just doing it to be nice to his friend you know starry ass kind of guy usually. Distracted look. No. Only because I'll have to like move his head and stuff and I don't want to do that. If he was distracted he, he would probably be facing like more towards the clouds out here and not down at his friend. Thank you. 
Now the grin is kind of what I had before. Uh, but anything bigger than this will look weird. some artifact thing it looks like from where I erase things if I'm not super careful. think this is going to work. Nope. It's all about just doing it. Um, a lot of the approaches that I'm taking from 
today. Uh, or the way I'm trying to approach this one today is what I'm trying to say. Uh, is like an ink drawing where you kind of have to just put the brush down and like do the thing. Can't really. can't really hesitate too much, I guess. Let's be further over. Um. So the confidence comes from generally like practicing, but one of the good things about uh, you know working digitally is uh, get that undo button right there, man. Get that undo button if you don't like it, and you can erase stuff too. It's pretty great. When you do it with ink, it's like a lot more stressful and annoying also. down and don't like it, and you're kind of stuck with it. Try and keep in touch with, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always good to go back and do traditional stuff if you're primarily working digitally. Um, If only just for the, like, this needs to be higher up and closer. Um, if only just for the, like, oops. Um. For the ability to sort of see what the tools you're mimicking actually will do and behave like. And also it helps you to kind of appreciate <laughs> your digital tools a little more as well. At least it usually does for me. Oops. Thanks, hello. It's a, it's a tough habit to kind of break out of, but it's really great once you kind of do. I mean, of course, there's always like the, uh, the desire to fix it if you see it 
and stuff like that, of course, but um, sometimes it's just kind of better off to like let it go. Boy, that don't look good. Um, let's see, you have to fix it. Not always, but sometimes. Usually, if it's just like a glaring problem, I will go and fix it if I, if I see it. Sometimes I'll fix like little stuff here and there, but I try not to. Hoping this will help to hide some of these crimes. Testing uh, a new brush, oops, and uh, some new techniques again. I keep coming up with ideas for comics, so I keep trying to streamline the process to make the comics while I think about the details I want to include for the comics. So that's why we're doing this kind of new technique situation again, like yesterday. But yesterday was like kind of closer to what I usually do, so. Yeah, someone uh, asked if I was going to do another one, which has got me thinking about the next Halloween comic I'm going to do. Because I wasn't really planning on it until this person asked, and I was like, oh yeah, that's coming up soon. So I do have a plan. It's actually a comic I had been wanting to... Er, it's going to use an idea for a comic that I had a while ago um, that I think will fit with the spooky month. And I'm 
pretty excited about it. There's a couple details I gotta figure out still, and also uh, I gotta figure out what everyone's costumes are gonna be this year. You know? forgot that I don't ever draw his uh, frames. Like the, uh, what are they called? The arms of the glasses? I never draw those. I always forget about that. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, the pen is uh, the same charcoal sketchy boy that I use for when I'm sketching every day. But I made some minor adjustments to more solidify the line so that I can use it for like inking and stuff. But if I'm not careful with how I position it, you still get some of that.
Okay. This. Good night, car. Thank you for hanging out. Anything wild and crazy? Uh, not really. Same old, same old type stuff, you know? Alright, I was putting off drawing his big boots. Extraordinarily rough with the uh, where this boot's gonna go.
that. I think I need to turn off that like, tilt thing. Uh, I don't know enough about the specifics of it. So. Looks like it stays, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Attempt to figure out these trees now. Um, so we probably got like a branch coming this way, one coming this way.
Uh, cool stuff for the pad. Nice. I'm sure you've got it. They're gonna be like, whoa. Check out them skills. And then you're gonna be like, yeah, I know. And then they'll be all like, well, of course you've won. You'll be like, yes, I'm aware. And then everyone's gonna like cheer. It's gonna be great. Yeah. 
I would love to know. Unless it's like top secret. In which case, keep it secret, keep it safe, as they say. specific thing I'm doing with like all of this stuff for this tree everything but I kind of like doing it by hand like this it gives me like slightly more control and also it's slightly more fun is reaching the limit of decipherability uh, for now. But I promise it'll make more sense later. All the shenanigans and splotching around.
Neat. That sounds like a fun time. Additions for more cool. Everyone else is awful. You don't need to wish for others to be bad for you to be good. You're gonna do great. Don't even worry about the others.
so now I'm going to turn this down a bunch. New school for Dream Major, nice. Major, I would have preferred my school didn't get into like my senior year. It made me quite sad. <laughs> I just picked uh, some stuff that was close to what I wanted. I was like, I'll figure it out. I left, they were like, hey, we're offering a new major. I was like, dang. But at that point, it was so expensive that I was like, mm, don't need to stick around for additional years. But it was cool. I learned a lot of stuff. applicable to most other stuff. Mm. Looking at this now, if I really wanted to, I could leave this slightly further away layer this color 
I didn't really intend to, but I could. It might be kind of neat looking. I had originally intended for this to be sort of more like a coloring book situation where I'm only doing black and white. Well, light gray, because that's the color canvas I usually work on, but still. Um, but maybe adding a little depth here might not be so bad. A little color variation. There is an artist who I saw earlier today talking about uh, some of their process for the comics that they draw. I only just recently started following this person like after reading this thread today. Uh, apparently they post helpful threads all the time about their process on Twitter, so I'll have to go look for who they are again. Um, but they draw comics professionally. Uh, this was using examples for a comic that they're doing for DC right now. Um, but the gist of it was how to use contrast more. Um, so everybody knows about like using contrast colors, but often a very neglected uh, aspect of it is contrast through other elements, such as uh, details in your composition. So um, in the examples that they had from the comic that they make, uh, they also kind of used examples from uh, 101 Dalmatians as well, with some of the background art, where if you go back and look at some of the background art for that film, uh, you'll see that this actually um, you'll see that uh, a lot of the backgrounds are very intricately like drawn um, but the colors are usually pretty simple and like almost haphazard looking uh, but that's like intentional so that sort of not getting stuck in all the crazy uh, details in the background of the scene or whatever. It makes it look a lot more interesting. It's the short version of what what's happening here. Um, so this person explained how they use similar contrast in their comic with... Uh, like not only the line art stuff, but, um, or not only the color stuff, but like with the line art stuff. Uh, so the example they used was they'll do lots of like clean, fine details for areas that are um, like uh, a person's skin and face and hair. Um, because those are spots that people's eyes are going to be a little more drawn to. Um, and then it gets slightly more loose and like sketchy for like their clothes and the folds in their clothes. 
and then it gets even looser and uh, like more of like straight lines type of stuff for like excuse me for like backgrounds and stuff if that makes sense uh, speaking of which let's finish up this background here Um, and then when they go back and do color stuff, they, uh, contrast all of the detail for all the line art with, like, simple blocky, uh, color for, like, lighting and stuff like that. Um, and the specific aspect that they were talking about is whenever they do like harsh lighting rather than follow like the level of detail for the contours and lines for their like drawing they'll just use big blocky shapes I gotta find it maybe I'll retweet them uh, retweet this thread on Twitter so you guys can check it out. It's, it's pretty informative. Pretty nice. See you later, Turnip. Thank you for hanging out. Enjoy your dinner. I hope it's delicious. that might be okay Oop, don't want that don't want that seems fine to me. I didn't think at all about what I want the colors for this to look like. Oh no. Do you want to fix this though? Wait, 
this side. Something like that. Let's see how it ends up looking in a minute. out in a second. Uh, by which I mean I'm going to do it right now. Maybe this color? I want to keep it kind of simple. Um, but that's not what I'm doing right now. Right now I need to figure this out. Oh, 
Oops. Better. We've done it. Against all odds. Uh, okay. So... Let's start putting some colors in. And I want to do a sunset. Uh, I feel like I use this desert sunset every single time I draw. Draws, so maybe not that one. Maybe I'll use these colors and... Splash a little sunsettiness on top of it later. I think primarily I want like Lesson learned is I need to swap from that to this when I get to color stuff. Not even that. Uh, we're going here first. And we'll start with like this. I do like this principle, but not the execution. Let's just go with this whole palette, I think. Um, but maybe it starts here.
Oh no. I didn't close that side. Trying to be sort of loose. I don't want to go full on like. Uh, geometric shapes kind of abstracting out these clouds. I still kind of want to follow the lines, but I don't want to stay within them necessarily. the lighting though I think I will try this geometric ab abstraction situation just kind of see how it looks Aru, hello. 
Welcome. Fine. Mm-hmm. 
this stuff down here. See the lines, but not really. So this is our background. And now we'll grab this color. as if I'm saying your name wrong, but I hope you're having a wonderful time. I really hope this works out because uh, coloring this way is kind of nice when I don't really have to care a ton about it.
Coloring is more fun when you don't have to stay in the lines, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. It's much more relaxing. Especially for this particular brush for the line art stuff. Sometimes the liner can be fun though. Uh, this particular process we've tried today has been pretty fun. I may have to come back in and like mess around with this color palette a little more actually. But, oops. But filling in the main color spots like this now, uh, even if it's colors that I feel like I might change later, will help save me some time. Slightly. Actually, that's fine. Our mid layers. Got our friends here. Wasn't really planning on making this the skin uh, skin tone color thingy. This little bonus border around them. 
here. But maybe it'll look okay. I lied, I don't like it. are going to stay inside the lines. For a little bit more visual contrast. I'm going to use this color though because it's easier to see. I've seen some folks who will, uh, and maybe I'll do this someday. I'd have to like consciously think about it though. Um, who will take drawings that they've made and then put them online elsewhere as like coloring book pages for people to kind of print out and color in on their own. I feel like something like that might be kind of fun to do. And hopefully not a ton of extra work. But certain drawings were, uh, will be more accommodating, more accommodating to that than others. song uh, last week for me it was like you're using a song that you shouldn't use I had to appeal it because that song was definitely not even the song that was playing <clears throat> it's part of the reason that I like having the Spotify window as part of the stream so I can very quickly tell is playing during the timestamp because auto ID systems are usually pretty bad at identifying what a song actually is. Unless it's like a very well-known song or whatever. But I have a ton of streams on YouTube that are like that where it's like, you don't have a copyright strike, but this video can't be monetized because we're pretty sure there's a song in it. It isn't a free, like, fair use kind of song. 
and those are almost always wrong. But what I usually do is I will uh, jump to whatever the timestamp was that it thought was a bad song. And then I'll just take it off the playlist so that it doesn't happen again. So over time I've been getting less and less of those, which is nice. shapes are going to get connected underneath all this black.
No, not nearly there, like almost done. Nearly there, like almost done filling the shape in. <laughs> Still got a little ways to go before we're fully done with the drawing. This color, fill in this thingy. And you're going to make one swell bear. Poor Pri. Thank you for the follow. I think I said your name right. I hope I did. Hope you're having a lovely time. Wherever you're at out there. Uh, maybe not overlay for this. Maybe like color dodge. It's a little better. Okay. I want
might be the color I want for these pants. But we'll find out. I don't hate this. Gift or gift and subs. What a nice person. Thanks, anonymous gifter. Something like this. Say, and I don't know what to do. I didn't. 
Uh, what was that push I had just now? I think part of the appeal of this uh, style is the flexibility that it gives me for color. Like I could, if I was to do like this style for a whole comic that was like a longer comic, I could in theory just kind of do a single color to separate some of these layers rather than doing what I'm doing right now, where uh, oh, colors probably fine. where um, I'm kind of applying color to everything. Uh, I do want this to be darker. Where's that skin tone group at? Like 
here, I guess. Let's see how that goes. Stick with this palette a little bit. Let's try it here. to his usual hair color since I'm not actually using that color this time around. It's probably closer to what he would wear. Oh no. Yeah. some rest and sleep well. Hope you have some delightful dreams.
not really yeah uh, maybe we just go with like a lighter color instead what about here that feels better this oh I didn't fill that in feeling it. This is a Jesse. This is our line art layer. So now let's copy and paste everything down. do for us here. I think this one might be good. Hmm. I lied. It's not very good. Uh, what about if I... Some of this color here. Do a little bit of and yet kinda. Because usually these effects I will do on top of the line art layer. Uh, we're doing it underneath this time, so it's kind of cool. And we'll grab this. Layers. 
So now, now let's try those gradient maps. Now that there's like an actual gradient on top of everything. Maybe it'll do some stuff. adds like a little bit more contrast to these colors in a way that's not like crazy harsh. Uh, like if I was to just go in and just like straight up adjust the values for our lighting and contrast situation. Very dramatic shift. I think that's where I want this. And I'm going to grab this color. sign it with the brush I've been using. Uh, I was going to put it like here on this foot. Pretty okay. Mm. I do want to try something. This could ruin everything. But luckily, I'm doing this in a way that I can fix it later if I need to. What if I kind of crop this in a little bit more? I feel like there needs to be something up here in this empty space in the sky, but I don't want it to be okay. I do know what I want it to be. I just don't want it to draw too much attention is the thing. Try it and see. Nothing like right here. Yeah. 
Y'all knew it had to be in here. Something like this. really faint, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Make it a little ever so slightly more noticeable. Just to make sure the casual observer can see it. So now it's a fun goof where Jesse sees it and Roz does not. He's going to be all like, look over there. But Roz is going to miss it. It's one of those dramatic irony things that always used to frustrate me when watching cartoons. <laughs> it's like, it was right there. It 
it's like the thing that you see when you're like watching kids cartoons or whatever it's like no Dora turn around sniper's over there turn around he's not even hiding that good This to be slightly more noticeable, actually. don't want it lined up directly with the top of his head like it was. I think that's better. I'm going to say that that's better, and then I'm going to stop looking at it. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll be messing around with that thing for the rest of the day. I don't feel like doing that. Uh, so yeah, there's a drawing. Wow. Turn on that replay. Uh, thank you all for joining me. On this, uh, lovely stream. Where we tried some new things. Made some new brushes. I'm gonna have to try and do this again like this uh, style some more because I do really like it and it did seem like I got a lot more detail for doing a lot like a lot more detail in a lot less time so maybe I'll have to mess around with it a little more who knows um, but yeah as always if you want to see more drawings, uh, you can find this one and others on Twitter and Instagram. My name is the same as the one in the bottom right corner on your screen that you can see. Um, and if you want to see more streams and you're not subscribed, you can see all of the previous streams, except for the most recent one, over on YouTube. Uh, the name there is the same as here. There's probably a button for it somewhere on this page. And if you're on YouTube right now, hello from the past. I hope the future is nice. This is that part where all the YouTubers say, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, but, I mean, I'm not your dad. I'm not going to make you do anything. You can if you want. Uh, what else do I usually say? I'll be back again on Monday, perhaps. Um, yeah. Maybe. I, I feel like I always, when I do Wednesday streams, say that maybe I'll do a weekend game stream. But that has yet to happen. So... Who, who knows? Maybe someday it'll it'll occur. Uh, but until the next time I see you, go out and do something nice for someone, you know? Be a really cool and rad person, just for the sake of being really cool and really rad. 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Farewell. Have a lovely week and uh, a good weekend also. Goodbye. Goodbye.